every day, more and more road users are filming their journeys, which can often end in disaster. Pioneered by motorists in Russia and Eastern Europe, dashboard mounted cameras are constantly recording our behavior on the roads. From the bizarre to the ridiculous, the funny to the downright dangerous. The thousands and thousands of dash cams around the world have captured just about every mishap you can think of. Now we're going to delve into this treasure trove of stupidity on the roads. Put things right by pointing the finger of blame. Replay the action to see what really happened. And of course, there's nothing like seeing other people's mistakes when it comes to helping us become better drivers. And please remember, on all the clips, yes, that's all the clips we show, no one, and that means no one, is seriously hurt. So drive safely. Not everyone is this lucky. This episode of Car Crash TV features ridiculous road use from Russia and Eastern Europe that, had it happened in Britain, would have resulted in the following contraventions of the Highway Code. Section 227, subsection E. Take greater care in adverse weather conditions. Article 103. Give clear signals. And paragraph 33B of the Beginner's Guide to Common Sense. Watch out for great big trucks. Along with various other examples of horrendous driving that are almost impossible to categorize. One way to stay safe and help the environment is to take public transport. Although judging by the next clips, I'm not so sure you'd be any better off. Oh, the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus explode, fly off and nearly kill someone. I prefer the original. When a truck driver loses control, they rarely come off worse, because those things are so darn big. But then again, most trucks don't come face to face with trains. Next, a shocking skid that sees a local bus get horrible friction burns. It might seem crazy to say that was lucky, but having no passengers on board whilst having all your windows smashed in seems pretty lucky to me. There's something strangely hypnotic watching an event this utterly predictable unfold before your eyes. Let's see that again. Here it comes. It seems that trams really do cause a lot of drivers trouble. So here's a handy tip. When the tram is coming, don't drive across its rails. You can thank me later. Here's a piece of advice. If you're in a car and you find yourself in a dispute with a bus, don't use your expensive vehicle to make your point. You will only lose. Just ask anyone who lives in London. Coaches are so big, they're hard to miss. <laughs> Apparently not. Honestly, how could you possibly not see that coming? I mean, really? These public servants can get a bad rap, but sometimes they do good things. Only the quick reactions of the bus driver save these two pedestrians from disaster. Look where you're going, ladies. And finally, take a look at this clip. I call it Two Trams, One Car. Sounds like a famous internet video, but thankfully it's not. It's just one clown who manages to get sandwiched between two trams. Ah, indicators. Where would we be without them? Well, we'd be in much the same position as this bunch of half-wits. That's where. 
The following drivers show that for some, even the concept of communicating via a single flashing light is too much to grasp. These are the kings of bad indicating. If you don't indicate properly and you try to cut across the other drivers, you will get bumped. No point crying and arguing about it. Ooh, pop princess Sonia from the 80s isn't happy either. She hates bad indicating. Someone has been playing too many games consoles. You're not supposed to barge other cars off the road for bonus points. At least he ended up in the petrol station. Handy for a packet of crisps. Important fact, just because you indicate, it doesn't make the other traffic vanish. And if you don't indicate at all, you've got no chance. Here's some bad advice. When there is almost no room at all, don't even bother indicating. Just squeeze yourself in there. It only takes one fool to muck up everyone's day. We almost have enough cars here for a conga. He did indicate, though. The thing about speeding around like you're on a racetrack is that you're not. You're in the real world. So when people do normal stuff, like turn into their driveway... ..you'll find yourself snowed under with repair bills. And now for a classic example of pulling out into the fast lane without indicating. An inspired piece of idiocy. What is even more incredible than this pathetic piece of driving is that the elderly man in the car in front has the audacity to be angry. Just what are you pointing at? Yes, yes, that is my car. And you just drove into it. Thank you, old man. Now, here's an example of a truck who doesn't care for telling people about his cornering intentions. That was a close shave. And finally, we've seen this scenario before. Just when you escape from a near miss, along comes a larder. For the record, in this instance, the larder owner did nothing wrong. I know, I know. One for the scrapbook. Not only is it plain miserable, it's got an annoying habit of obscuring your vision and playing havoc with all your braking distances, giving it a special potential for turning otherwise sensible road users into utter liabilities. There now follows a brief public service broadcast on the perils of driving in wet conditions. As Article 227 of the Highway Code makes clear, braking distances are substantially increased in wet weather. Now a quick meteorology lesson. When temperature drops below freezing, rain turns to... ice. The advantage of a motorcycle is avoiding traffic jams. The disadvantage is that when it rains, you might as well be ice skating. And he's up and back on his way. They'll never believe him in the pub. That was a pretty bad wipeout, but he's got nothing on this guy. That'll leave some skid marks. This chap's out for a nice Sunday drive when he spots his mate's distinctive orange van. Unfortunately, you have to take one hand off the wheel to honk hello. Driving in wet conditions is stressful, but please don't let it get you in a spin. And he comes to a standstill. This next guy only just gets away with driving too fast in the rain. Phew. Now to take that piece of luck and smash it into tiny pieces. 
some people should not be allowed to drive. Just give that man a bus pass and have done with it. Please. No matter how stressful you find the wet conditions, please do stay on the road. It's the best place for you. And finally, while most accept the need for extra caution in slippery conditions, some see it as the perfect time to practice their handbrake turns. Now that was dangerous. Coming up, more sensible steering. And breathtaking braking. Plus, we'll find out which of these superbly skilled road users will be crowned Driver of the Week. But before all that, have a look at this and see if you can work out what happens next. Welcome back to Car Crash TV, your first port of call for handy driving tips. Before the break, we asked you to predict what might happen to this black saloon. The answer is... A massive lorry causes a real splash by sinking the bridge before driving off scot-free. That's put a dampener on his day. Sometimes, no matter how bad someone's driving is, they somehow manage to get away with it. The following quick-thinking, or just plain lucky drivers, manage to avoid disaster by millimetres. These, ladies and gentlemen, are the luckiest drivers in the world. This next clip is one of the most frightening I have ever seen. Like some 3D shock movie at a theme park. I can barely look! Phew! Only a new paint job needed. And maybe new trousers. Dad, can we play I Spy? No, no. Let's play Spin Dangerously Close to Oncoming Traffic. That'll keep you entertained. Count them. One, two, three near misses. Let's pull over for a second. Now, that was fun, wasn't it, kids? Everything seems sedate, but there's a larder in front, which is a little unnerving, to say the least. They're trouble magnets, those things, you know. Why has that bulldozer stopped? Is it rolling backwards? And sure enough, yes, that's 27 pounds worth of damage. Let's see a replay. If it wasn't for the amazing reactions of the lady driver, she might have been injured. And she remembered her handbag. And she's wearing flip-flops. She's my hero. <laughs> What's worse than a lorry driving into your path? The answer, two lorries driving into your path. That was close. Now prepare yourself for some motorway mayhem. The speeding white car completely loses it and causes a pileup. But in times of trouble, some people come out smelling of roses. And that guy deserves a medal for keeping it together. And finally, I guarantee you will not guess this next lucky escape. Ugh, you fluky rascal. mishap on the roads, there's a culprit, a guilty party, a villain. Now it's your chance to point the giant pointy finger of blame at who you believe is responsible for causing each motoring mishap. It's the blame game! Who do you think is at fault here? Ah, easy. It's that clown who clearly hasn't read Article 170 of the Highway Code. Take extra care at junctions. A busy intersection. Lights change to green. Yes, it's the madman in the minibus. He went through a red light. A speeding van. But no, 
It's the Black Saloon at fault here. Article 173 advises us to wait in the central reservation until it's safe to continue. And finally, there's no line, but the Silver Hatchback clearly should check before crossing this junction. That's it. Anything less than four correct answers is a poor show, frankly. Trucks. They think they own the place, don't they? These big bullies have been pushing other road users around for long enough. It's time for them to get their comeuppance as we reveal their bad behaviour once and for all. Quite simply, there is nothing more frightening than the sight of a very large, out-of-control truck. Is there? Ah, the boundless arrogance of the heavy goods vehicle driver. Observe as he ploughs straight into this wall as if it wasn't there. Oh, dearie me. I don't think he was cement to dump all those building materials there. OK, you've got ten wheels. How nice for you. That doesn't mean to say you can just fling them all over the place like that. Show off. Now, I dislike arrogant truck drivers as much as the next road user, but I cannot condone forming a posse and taking them on, on the highway. I'm not sure what this truck did to the white car, but it certainly seems personal now. On a list of things you don't expect to see hanging off the back of a truck, I'd say a bulldozer is right up there. But it seems to have sparked the other drivers into action. When Bob the Builder heard that Postman Pat was stealing his ratings, there was always going to be a clash. But who would have thought it would spill out onto the roads? Public announcement. If you drive an oil tanker and you're on a motorway, could you please not attempt a U-turn? Please? Thank you. There's a larder. Nice little Ford Galaxy. 20-ton truck hurtling towards an impending doom. Didn't expect that. Talking of impending doom, a truck water skiing into your path is right up there with the scariest things on the road. So to recap, an 18-wheeled articulated lorry is a sophisticated and deadly piece of equipment. They don't just let any old clown behind the wheel of one of those bad boys. Give him a break. He was reaching for his fruit gums. Darkness. It foils many a motorist. The night can ruin the simplest run to the shops with its shadowy mystery. To be a nocturnal driver, you need to have your wits about you. Remember the golden rule, people. Watch out for nighttime nonsense. Now, this is truly impressive. The driver here going for the world's longest slide in a very nice car. At least, it was a nice car. On the plus side, he's first in line for the bus home. Speaking of home, we all want to get there as quickly as possible after work. Unfortunately, this fool serves only to demonstrate the truth in the old expression, more haste, less speed. Your dinner's in the dog, pal. Don't you just hate it when you can't make up your mind about something? Like whether to stop for petrol? Do you turn back? Or not turn back? Yes? No? Maybe? No. Perhaps? No. Forget it. Just take a look at that nondescript field instead. Look, lorries. Everyone loves them. A dumper? A tanker? Is that one refrigerated? If only we could find a digger, we'd have the whole set. Hold on, is that a digger? Yep, yep, that was a digger. 
when two miserably bad drivers combine, we only get one outcome. It looks like Guy Fawkes here started preparing for bonfire night a little early. Either that, or someone's expecting fireworks when they get in. Being able to find your indicator doesn't automatically make you any less of an idiot. Look where you're going, bozo! And finally, if you need to make a sudden 90-degree turn on a busy highway, then here's one approach. Using the central reservation for a handbrake was novel, to say the least. Not sure it's legal, though. Or safe. And so we come to the end of another episode of Car Crash TV. But on the plus side, it's time to find out who wins the title of Driver of the Week! In reverse order, at number five, it's the Expressway Spinner. At four, it's the driver with too many friends. At three, Guy Fawkes. At number two, it's the winner of the world's longest slide in a nice car. And at number one, by way of not doing any driving, but simply knowing when to get out... <laughs> Flip Flop Woman is our driver of the week. Next time on Car Crash TV, more maniacal motoring and truly terrifying trucking. And whatever you do, keep safe. Not everyone is as lucky as these people.